Good morning. It's pouring with rain here in France as usual. However, we've got a major problem to do with the solar panels. And this is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. And it all stems from extending these panels from eight strings, for, well, from eight panels per string to nine panels per string. I've made a big mistake in my calculations and uh, we've got a little bit of a situation here. Now it's pouring with rain, so let's go inside the plant room and I'll explain a little bit more. So we had the big switch on and we've had a few days, well, we actually had a, a whole uh, week last week of pretty amazing solar. And we, at some points, we got up to 14 kilowatts, which was fantastic. However, I started getting really nervous because I noticed that uh, on the new strings of solar panels, although like normally I would say like day to day use, we were running roughly at around uh, 430 volts, 435 volts, which is still quite high. And well, let me just backtrack a minute. We're using the Victron charge controllers and these are the 450 slash 100s. And you can only go up to 450 volts on these charge controllers before they will shut down. And if you continue you know, going over the 450 volt, it will shut down and eventually you'll, you'll damage the unit. So it's really important that you don't go over the 450 volts. Now, last week we had a day where it dipped below 10 degrees Celsius and we had some really good sun and we got up to, I think it was 441. I think we even had 444 at one point. So we're starting to get up there very, very close to the 500 volts. Now, at the moment, this isn't really a situation, but it will become much more of a situation when the temperature drops. So the thing with solar panels is the colder they get, the more efficient they actually work at. So in the middle of the winter, if, if you know, let's just imagine a really, really cold December winter morning where it's uh, like, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, the sun is coming up, the solar panels are all frozen and it's, let's say, minus one, minus two, minus three and we get that morning sun, we could get over 450 volts. And if the temperature ever did drop to, let's say, minus 10, which it never has here, actually. I mean, I think it, we, we once have had it uh, at minus, uh, minus five. I've looked at historical records and I think it has got to minus 10, but that was like, you know, 40 years ago or something. So I'm not too worried about that, but, but minus five could definitely happen. And I think if we had minus five and it was sunny, we would 100% reach that five, uh, 450 volt, um, you know, so yeah. Now the other worrying thing was when we had that day of 440 volts, I took a reading in here and it was 440 volts, but then I went into the barn where the uh, solar combiner boxes are. And bearing in mind, that is quite a long way away from this plant room, it's in a, in a different building. So we've got a long cable run. Anyway, in the garage, at the solar combiner boxes, we were actually running at 450 volts right there. Um, and it was only due to the voltage loss from the length of the cable that we were kind of like, OK, so we've got a big problem and uh, I've made a big mistake, so <laughs> which is a real pain. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to go back up on the roof, Jude and I, and we're going to have to take down the um, some of these panels and bring it back down, scale it back down to an eight panel string. Now eight panels, it the, the voltage is still slightly over, but when you factor in the fact that we've got an, uh, roughly around an 80 meter length of cable, so we've got, we're going for about 80 meters of cable to get, or maybe it might even be 90 meters of cable to get back to the plant room, we actually drop, the, the voltage is massively dropping off. And we've had those panels at, you know, with, with eight, eight panels on the string going for over a year now, and it's been fine. So I think eight panels is really the limit uh, that we can run the system at. So that's going to be the next job. So the next job Jude and I are going to be doing is we're going to be going back up on the roof. I mean, it's not too much of an issue because we still we still actually have the ladders on the roof. The scaffolding tower is actually all still set up. So it's not too much of an issue. But you know what is the problem? We actually extended the rails out so they would fit nine panels. So it's a case of do I take the panel off and just leave a bit of ugly rail there or do I take the, the, the solar panel extension rail off? I think we might take the extensions off. 
Um, but then now we're left with holes in the roof. So, oh, so I think we're going to have to work out some way to plug those holes. Um, it's just all of, it's just it's just a mess. It's just so annoying. But you know, this is the, this is the thing with DIY. It's, we you know we're experimenting. We're seeing what will work. We're seeing what won't work. We're seeing how far we can push things. So uh, it, you know, it's, it, it's and to be honest, taking those panels off, it's probably like two hours of work. So actually, it's not too bad. Now, here's the thing. Those panels which come off are not going to waste. We're actually going to put them on the back of the house. So we've actually got six of these new panels. So I actually had an extra three panels in stock already. So we've actually got six of these brand new panels in stock now. So I'm going to create a string of six panels, these new panels, to go on the back of the house. We've removed eight of the old panels uh, off, off the barn. Now we can't put those eight panels on our house because having eight panels um, on, you know, all, all connected up on um, the back of the house, the voltage will be too high again. Because if we connect the panels literally just above where I'm sitting right now, that's not a hundred meter cable run. We're probably only like 10 meters, maybe 20 meters max. And uh, I've looked at the calculations and everything and we, we can't do eight panels, but seven panels will be fine. So uh, the old panels, we're going to connect seven of, the, seven of those um, old panels up and put those. So we're going to have one string of seven panels and then a second string of uh, six panels because that's just all I have. It's kind of annoying. I wish I could get an extra panel. I'll see what the shipping is. Uh, the solar company, they charge crazy prices for shipping solar panels, but I'll see how much they will charge to ship me one solar panel. But if they're going to charge me like 300 euros to, to, to send me one solar panel, I'm obviously not going to do it. Um, I'll have a word with them, see what they'll do. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the thing about solar panels in France is they're, they're like 69 euros each or something. They're not expensive, but the shipping is expensive. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's really expensive. So um, I think we're just going to do one string of seven, one string of six, um, and that will be fine. So that's what we're going to be up to next. The, the We're going to be taking those panels off and then obviously we've got to reinforce the roof because it's a very, very old roof here. I'm worried about wind loads and the panels lifting bits of the roof off. So we're going to have to work out some way to anchor the roof to the building. Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, so that's going to be kind of like the next job. Um, I'm also going to have to order all of the connectors and rails and everything else to put on the roof here because this is a slate roof. Um, so um, we've never put panels on a slate roof. Luckily, Jude is a roofer by trade. So um, I've got the right person on the site to help me with that. So we need special brackets which slot underneath the slates and then bolt into the um, uh, they, they bolt into the into the rafters. Um, but we'll do a little bit of reinforcing, like I said. So luckily we own the house next door as well, which is the guest house. So we're going to put um, the a solar panel string probably over the threshold of both houses, because I reckon that's the strongest part of the roof, because we have a dividing wall between the two houses. Um, so there's a lot of strength in the roof there, and there's no overshadowing from um, from trees or anything like that. So that's kind of like the part of the roof I'm thinking about putting the panels on because I think that's the strongest part of the roof. Um, and there's uh, obviously we've got that oak tree there on the left hand side, um, which is only going to get bigger. So, you know, we might have a bit of shading from that oak tree if we put the panels further to the left. So, uh, yeah, so that's the plan. Um, so, so yeah, anyway, so that's what's going on. We've got some other projects coming up as well, a little bit of DIY. We're going to be reno starting renovating another barn on the other side of the property. Um, and we might be putting solar panels on that as well at some point. But uh, right now we just need to stabilize the walls and get, get um, that barn into shape. So let me know if you'd like to see any of that kind of like DIY stuff of us renovating another barn, you know, fixing up the roof, getting that ready for solar and stuff like that. Um, let me know in the comments if that would interest you. Um, so that's it for this video. Sorry, it's a little bit of a short video, but in the, like I said, in the next video, I've already got Jude booked in. We're gonna start taking those solar panels down um, reducing those strings back up to eight and then we'll take it from there. Okay guys, look, I love all your comments. I love reading your comments. Please keep those comments going. Let me know what you think and, um, um, and, and don't forget to like the video. Catch, I'll catch you next time.